<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back and thank you for patiently waiting for us while we took a break. As you know, we've been to the East Himalayas on a classic car rally. It was about five weeks in all, end to end. The rally itself was 24 days, but we were there before and after from a preparation wrap-up point of view. And we had the absolute joy of going to India, Bhutan and Bangladesh. I think it was three and a half thousand kilometers. And it was an incredible journey. Paul was on the mechanical support side, I was on the logistical support side of an incredible crew called Destination Rally, who we are actually yeah. doing more rallies with, but more about that later. So what I love about these rallies is we get a, a great collection of beautiful old classic and sometimes pre-war cars of all ranges, you know, Porsches, Jaguars, Heelys, Aston Martins, Lagonda, uh, Bentleys, beautiful, beautiful cars. And everyone has the same mindset in a way like, we're going to drive this car and explore these places and see what it has to share with us. markets we went through in these cars you had you could lean out and shake hands with the vendor and they were lifting their roofs and moving the sticks so we could get our cars through a one alleyway with car to drive through very precariously also filled with people tuk-tuks um, animals dogs cows yeah, everything and the opportunities to interact and go through I mean the cars allow people just to break those barriers, communicate in ways which are not so easy to communicate if you don't have the language understanding. And I think that, that's given us over the years um, a, different, a different element of what you can take away. Yes, there's always a challenge, and if you're looking after, you know, 10 or 15 cars um, and a few four-wheel drives, you're not going to have all the parts you need to fix these cars. And sometimes you can't, you can't even get them. I mean, this last one we had a, a motorbike, an R80 GS, driven by a wonderful couple from Holland. The motorbike, the lady's bike, the cylinder head had a problem, and that had to go through four or five journeys to make its way to me to be able to fit it, fix the bike so they can continue. But the reward of doing that, achieving it, seeing a vehicle make it all the way to the end, it's a great achievement. Uh, it's something I really enjoy making a plan. And making a plan is very much an African-ism, I'd say. You know, it comes through so many countries. You can, I can think of going through Zimbabwe and other parts of Africa where something goes wrong. and. People come together and they go, oh, we could fix this. We'll make a plan. So I've loved that term. It's, it's a very reassuring term to give someone when their car's got a problem or something doesn't look good. Yeah. And you can say, don't worry, we're going to make a plan. So India has been, I would say, probably my favorite country off the African continent. And one of the few countries that Paul hasn't traveled, so that was very exciting for me. Yeah. <laughs> and when I said traffic, <laughs> I still remember Paul coming back to the hotel saying, no, you warned me, but not really, because doing it and, and hearing it is a whole, <clears throat> And they say in India, you need three things. Good brakes, good horn, and good luck. <laughs> and Paul had to apply all three <laughs> baptism by fire uh, around Kolkata before we even got on the route. Take your driving book manual you learnt, throw it out the window, and drive in the mindset of how you drive in India, and it really works. I loved it. Uh, that's a country I look forward to going back to explore more of and meet more amazing people 
in, in India especially. But so interesting, you've got it all going on. As Paul said, trucks, tuk-tuks, buses, people, swamis, cows, dogs, beggars. You've got it all going on on the street. Vendors, there isn't an accident. Nobody gets knocked down. Dogs don't get run over. Everybody is moving and everything is flowing mm. and there's no road rage. Yeah. People are yeah. just going and flowing and allowing. It's, it's like poetry in motion. It's unbelievable. Then you go to Bhutan, which is, it's silence. That's very beautiful. This, it's like you can hear the silence. It's so, it's so quiet. And then you go to Bangladesh and all hell breaks loose. I a whole nother game. You know, when you're driving, you can't take your expectations, your experience and impose it on a situation. Be it in how you conduct yourself or how you drive. So the quicker you understand how things work, and in India the hooter is used to actually tell you, tell the person in front of you, hey I'm going to overtake you, so just be aware. Okay, big trucks all have got signs, hoot to warn me, honk to warn me, just let me know. And you might be driving down a double road and a car's coming up the same direction as you're traveling and you'll just move apart and let it go past. So it's almost like water flowing down a mountain and it gently just finds its way around all the obstacles. And I promise you, driving in Kolkata was <laughs> worse baptism by fire, but I, I found it fascinating. You know, I think in the whole rally and all the time we drove, you think 18 cars, three and a half thousand kilometers driven by all those vehicles, we had a few minor incidents, minor, I mean a, a bump on a fender or a wing mirror that went off or something like that. Um, nothing that really was major, major accident. And considering driving up tight hairpin bends, mountain passes, where you have to use your horn because the guy coming down is going to use the whole road and you will slow down and stop and squeeze past each other. But it's that kind of respect and a mutual allowing which is probably so much ingrained in the culture of who those people are that I really admired and yeah, it was fascinating. Words were sometimes superfluous because there were some areas where people just didn't speak English. And it was incredible how we still got to communicate. But it just fascinated me more and more, the more remote we went, how little the use of language was necessary. Because just by a smile and a gesture and a touch, it actually touched people's lives. Yeah, I think we don't understand the value of those small significant gestures. And all too much we rely on distractions, we're relying on the cameras and everything else that we've got to capture the moment. And you often miss the moment. And I think that's, you know, to me very important that when you're traveling, you take the time to capture that moment in your heart. So now that we've recovered from this one, we are really gearing up for the next rally, 2023 January. And this time we're going to Sri Lanka. It's a little bit shorter, it's uh, 14 days. But another country that neither of us have been yeah. to, and we're really looking forward to doing that. And we want to say thank you very, very much to all of you who've supported us, who've championed us, who have followed us and encouraged us to continue the work that we love which is combining travel, the vehicle, and the people side, yeah. which is where the essence of overlanding brings it all together. And we wish you all a wonderful festive season, and may 2023 be everything you would like it to be. In joy, in peace, and in good health. Mm -hmm. From Paul and I. Mm -hmm. That's nice.